want to start this episode off on a philosophical note. You see, Zakane's been up here for a few days. Just hanging out, enjoying the fine wine from the cellar of Battlehorn after his recent victory over Mana Marco. And he's thought a lot about the fact that he couldn't have done it without Traven's sacrifice. That definitely helped us uh, defeat him. For sure. And on top of that, he knows that the Aedra are the ones who helped him. That the gods definitely had something to do with his victory. And on top of all that, he made a promise at the Chapel of Talos. That he was going to do good for the world. He was going to change his ways. Thinking back on all the terrible things that we did. Not so long ago. Maybe months ago in game. But that's all behind us now. And though we might have a few bad habits that cross over from that. They can also be very useful. But regardless. Zakin has gotten word of a certain prophet in Anvil who is preaching about some sort of cataclysmic event coming. And it, no, it's not the one that involves the Emperor. But we're going to suit up. I think it's time we uh, head out. I wonder if I can get an acrobatic spell in maybe. Maybe I can jump slightly. Let's see. I just want to try something really fast for fun. It's probably a total waste of time. Thanks for embellishing me as I... Oh, no. See how high we can jump? Ooh, look at that. Up here on the roof. Yeah, 20 steel arrows. Still one. Battleborn Castle Private Quarters. What? Hang on. Before we check that out, I want to see if I can get up any higher. Boy, we can jump pretty high with... Oh. Oops. Uh, we can jump pretty high with this acrobatic spell on. Look at that. That's crazy. Let's see where this trap door goes. I swear I've never... Whoa, what? Is there a jewelry box back here? Some chests? Okay, is this a secret room? Lord Jaren's journal. Oh! This is about... This is about how they built that castle and uh, with the lich that took his father. Interesting. We'll leave that here. So that tells you the whole story there. Cool. Got some potions. Well, is there really a secret passage? Look at that. Comes out right here in my private quarters this whole time. I had no idea. That's sweet. And it goes up to the roof. Cause yeah, here's the here's the master bedroom. Awesome, man. Been thinking a lot about how fun the uh, the mages guild was, you know. And and on on a less serious note than what I started with, I, I gotta be honest. Am I the only one that thinks it's a little silly? In, in just when you look at it on paper, like um, the mages guild for Mana Marco being an ancient enemy of theirs. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they just got overconfident or whatever. But it's hilarious to me that they. Didn't think, like, any. they didn't know anything about Necromancy or Black Soul Gems at all. And then he shows up and the Archmage is like, "We've I've talked to the others, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill myself and you can fight him. I'm kind of like, what? If there's a mage that's qualified to fight him, wouldn't it be you? I don't know. I think it's funny. I guess you don't have to be the best mage in order to run the school. It's like, you don't have to be the smartest person to run a university. <clears throat> most universities in, in the United States right now. Okay, anyways. Uh, let's talk to this guard really quick. I wouldn't go in there unless you have a strong stomach. What? We have orders to leave everything just the way it was until the investigation into the chapel attack is finished. Interesting. Uh, what is this about a chapel attack? It's baffling. How anyone could have gotten in and out of there without being seen by our patrols is beyond me. Maybe that prophet is right. Some kind of unholy doom visited upon us. A uh, prophet, you say? He preaches most of the day across the street from the chapel. Oh, right by us. I used to think he was crazy. 
but now he seems to be making some kind of sense. <laughs> I hope that doesn't mean I'm going crazy now. No, not necessarily. All right, thank you. Be seeing you. All right, we'll check out the prophet here in a second. Let's go in here in the chapel of Debella. She's like the Adra of, uh, kind of like Sanguine, but an Adra in sex and love and stuff. What the? Okay, blood. Oh! That's a pretty recent attack. Who's this? Anvil Chapel key and some gold. Do, 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 as they rob their bodies. I'm going to serve the good gods. All right, let's rob off the corpses of those who serve them. Holy... Look at this. All around the altars written some sort of ancient runes in blood. And there's a gal in the middle. That's really messed up. That's really messed up. What about this person back here? Need another one. Unfortunately, Debella of all of them, they're priestess. Mo if you serve Debella, you're all priestesses, I think. Oh, this is a dude. I don't know why a dude would be in here. I guess, or no, that's a chick. I don't know. I think it's a chick. I want to move it, but they have an investigation to do. So yeah, Debella, she only has priestesses. Because she's like the matriarch of the uh, of the divines. You know, that sort of thing. I guess Kinnereth is a woman too, but you know what I mean. She's kind of into the womanly, feel-good, sex, love kind of stuff. So, yeah. So, uh, what I'm getting at here, though, is that their priests... Their priestesses would be less powerful than some of the other Raider who actually fight, like Stendar. If you tried to raid a chapel of Stendar, I feel like people in there would generally be able to fight back. Not the case here. And even if they did, I mean, we have no idea what attacked them. Uh, I don't think I've shown you guys this yet. And this can be very important for what we're going to do next. I'll show you these. So we have Julianos. Now, I might get some of these wrong. I'll probably correct myself later. But Julianos is associated with uh, mages. Um... You know, you'll see him a lot. So they each kind of have a main thing that they're known for. So mages and magicka, that sort of thing. Akatosh is the dragon god of time. That's why he's displayed with a dragon head as well as a human head. That's uh, from Skyrim, if you know Skyrim. Alduin is his firstborn. Arke, who is the god of uh, burial rites and uh, is very anti-undead, kind of like Meridia. Debella, obviously I told you who she is, and her stuff's covered up with blood. Ooh. Man, they did that's really messed up. Stendar. This is a Red Guard classic. It's, the Red Guards especially revere him. He's um been known to be a more of a fighter type, but Stendar uh has to do with uh, he has the the horn chalice as his emblem. I'm trying to remember what all he's over. Uh, very much associated with warriors and, and uh, anti-undead, that sort of thing. A lot of paladins um, fight under the banner of Stendar. Talos, the controversial ninth divine, who is actually... Um, I don't want to make it too complicated. You can go check it out for yourself. Go check out... I referenced this video the other day, but I just watched it again. That's why it's on my mind. Go watch uh, Zarek the Hacker on. That's the guy's name. He has a About the Elder Scrolls series, episode 2, on Daggerfall. It's like an hour 40 minutes. But if you go to the part that explains the endings, he'll tell you about Talos. And Talos is not one guy. Everyone that's just played Skyrim thinks it's one dude. It's not. It's three people. He's three people. Yeah, dead serious. Eastmere is one of them, by the way. He did all the work. And then Talos Stormcrown is another guy and then his battle mage. But you can go you can go research that. Anyways, the three combined into one and then ascended to godhood after the ending of Daggerfall. Because Talos didn't exist in the timeline before the dragon break at the end of Daggerfall. I know it's a lot of stuff I'm throwing at you, but just follow with me here for a sec. At the end of Elder Scrolls 2, there was a dragon break. And the dragon break is where all timelines converge. So everything that is an ending happens at the same time. So what's funny is instead of the war in Daggerfall destroying everyone because all of the factions won, everyone prospered. No one lost the war, if that makes sense. It's very confusing. But anyways, one of the endings is that you help the Underking, which is undead Talos, 
who's trapped because of a curse. And it's actually not Talos himself. It's Esmir and the Battle Mage that Talos and the Battle Mage stabbed Esmir in the back. Yes, there was some underhanded stuff. Talos was not a good guy. Everyone thinks he was some great guy and he was a very good leader. And he did unite all the people and make treaties and conquer, you know, Somerset and all that stuff. But he was very ruthless. If you play the game Elder Scrolls Red Guard, he totally screws over the Red Guards and Stros Mackay. Totally tells them they're going to do a peace treaty, and then they showed up with a navy and attacked them. But for, lucky for the Red Guards, they uh, they know how to fight. And I think the main hero's name in that was... Oh my gosh, I'm blanking right now. Anyways, he was a Red Guard. He was awesome, and he, he fought them off. Uh, battle Stros Mackay, yeah, that's a cool battle between pirates and the Empire. But anyways, sorry, I keep getting sidetracked. Lore, lore crazy today. But there's Talos. He's uh, he's controversial because the elves don't like that a man ascended to God. Because the elves are direct, directly derived from the blood of the Aedra. So, and men were created by... Um, they were tricked into creating men. So they're very offended that this guy could be the Ninth Divine. Also notice his symbol above his head up there. It's the symbol you see on the cover to Skyrim. It's the symbol of the Empire, all that. So Talos is... Kind of the the staple god. Him and Akatosh are kind of viewed in the in the top. Not that these guys aren't as powerful. Zenithar. Zenithar is uh, known for mercantile. I could be getting him and Julianos mixed up. No, Julianos is mages. Zenithar is mercantile, commerce, that sort of thing. And then we have Mara, who is the restoration goddess. She deals with uh, healing and and you know the uh, healing the sick and that sort of thing. And then you have Kinnereth, and she's the goddess of nature um if you're familiar with the skull who live on solstheim if you played morrowind's expansion blood moon or the dragonborn dlc for skyrim they talk about the all maker it's believed that the all maker is kinnereth so um because they, they deal with nature magic and that's where the belief stems from and just so you know all the races have different names other than men um all the races have different names for these gods. These are just the commonly adopted ones for the Empire's sake, their official religion. But like the Khajiit, they have all these same gods, but they call them different things. Crazy Khajiit names. Argonians don't really have this faith system, but whatever. Some of them believe it. Uh, one important difference is you'll hear somebody say Ariel. Ariel is the same thing as Akatosh. But the difference is, is that Ariel is the elf version of Akatosh. So they're the same thing. So, there's a few gods like that, but for general purposes, these are the nine divines uh, that you need to know. Alright, enough yabbing. Let's go, uh, let's go talk to this, this prophet. Actually, do I have a quest for this by chance? Pilgrimage. Um, okay, yeah. Let's go talk to the prophet. The sun's coming up. Looks like he's getting up for the day. Excuse me. Oh my! To what do I owe this honor? I am but a humble prophet. What business do you have with me? Do you know anything about this anvil chapel attack? This is only the beginning. Umaril has returned as foretold by Pelinal Whitestrake in his dying breath. Wow. Umaril? Who's that? Umaru the Unfathered, the Sorcerer King of the Aliens, who ruled over this land for long ages before the rise of men. He was cast down by Pelinal Whitestrake, but Umaru's spirit survived, and now he has returned to seek vengeance upon the gods. Uh, who is Pelinal Whitestrake? Oh. Does no one remember the old tales? Sorry. Saint Pelinal, the divine crusader of legend, Alicia's companion when she overthrew the rule of the Aliens 3,000 years ago. Pelinal, with the aid of the gods, fought the alien sorcerer King Umaril and slew him! But... Umaru's spirit survived, and he has now returned. Well, that doesn't sound good whatsoever. Uh, just tell me who attacked the chapel. Do you understand nothing? The blood speaks, 
I can read the ancient runes if you cannot. Oh. As uibala umarale el nada rakuva. In the alien tongue, by the eternal power of Umaril, the mortal gods shall be cast down. A curse upon Umaril's ancient foes and a threat. Oh, so how do we stop Umaril? Alas, Umaril cannot be stopped. Not without the aid of the gods, not without the Crusader's relics. Without a champion, the gods are powerless to act. But who among us is worthy to wield the divine Crusader's weaponry? Well, um, I don't know who will stop Umaril. Nor do I. Oh, my people! Who will save you from destruction? Is there none now worthy to be your crusader? Tell me more about this quest for the relics. Are you a worthy knight? <laughs> so look at all the answers because of all the stuff we've done. I can say, yes, I am a worthy knight. Or I can say, yes, I am the fighter's guild master. Or yes, I am the arena grand champion. Yes, I am the Archmage. No, I serve Sithis. Uh, not unless the Grey Fox is a knight. These are awesome. I've never seen all these dialogue. Um, but, no. I have no claim to fame. Even though that's not the truth. That's what the king in his humbled state would say. Let the gods be the judge of that. I cannot see into men's hearts. I see only their words and deeds. How can I find the relics? The gods grant insight to those they deem worthy. Why and how they act is not predictable. What I can tell you is that, <clears throat> traditionally, knights who wish to quest for the relics would walk the Pilgrim's Way, travel to the way shrines of the Nine Divines, pray to each of the gods in turn, and ask their favor upon your quest. If the gods deem you worthy, you will be granted a sign. Go forth with the Nine's blessings. Wow, okay. Uh, tell me about the Eight and One. Once there were Eight Divines. Then Tiber Septum became Talos. And the Eight became Nine. I follow the old way of honoring the eight while also giving due to Talos, the one who ascended. You would give an elf a stroke if you told him that. Like a high elf traditionalist, stuck up prick, you know, that's like super racist. They would freak if you said that. Absolute freak. It, like social justice warrior levels of freak out. <laughs> All right, um... Tell me more about Umaril. He was defeated, but not destroyed by Pelinol. Only a... Okay, and basically what you said before. Wield the relics to destroy him. All right, thank you. May the eight and one guide your steps. Indeed, may they guide our steps. Well, before we set off... Um, well upon this chapel and now he's going to now he's gonna start Look preaching. So everyone that thought that... Horksamir guy in Whiterun was the first one to do this. Nope, this guy did it. In Oblivion. The real OG. Anyways, so let me tell you a little bit about what we've got to go do, and then we'll, uh, we'll go on quite a journey here. So what it wants us to do is if I open this, he gives us a deal. Where is it? Where is it? Way Shrine's map. So this is all you get. You don't get quest markers or anything. Now, there are more shrines than these, I believe, to certain divines, but these are the main shrines. So you have to walk, you have to find the shrine, and then you have to go pray at it. And none of these are marked locations. So we can have stuff around them. We probably have stuff close to all these, but we have to go find them on foot. You have to pray at each one. Now, here's what's interesting. This marks the repentance process. So we have to fully repent 
of everything we've ever done to become pure. And then we can quest for the relics. If at any time, I'm not kidding, at any time after that, we do anything that breaks the moral code of the gods, there will be serious consequences. I hope we don't find out what those are. I might tell you later what they do. But after that, we have to immediately go repent again at all the shrines. And that sounds tedious, but I actually think it's awesome from a roleplay perspective. Because it encourages you, if you're going to go this route, I'll show you what I'm talking about as far as like what we're going to acquire during this DLC. Um... If you want to go that route, it makes you play the character that way. And I, I've always been a fan of like paladins, crusaders, uh, you know, priests, that sort of thing in fantasy. I like the holy magic, holy knight stuff. So it appeals to me. If you don't like it, I get it. That's fine. But anyways, so here's the shrine. So you got to go find these and you can do them in any order. Um, we'll go hunt them down here in a second. But the other thing I wanted to tell you guys really quick is he keeps talking about this Polineal White Strake. Now, I'm no expert on this guy because it's all over the place, but let me give you the short version. Let me read you a little bit from the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages because he, in my opinion, White Strake is one of the most interesting characters in all of the lore and not many people surprisingly know about him. This is the only time I think, other than some books you can find in the series, that they actually talk about him. So let me let me tell you about him. So, Polenial White Strike, this is off the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages. Um, he fought alongside Mor Morehas, which was the Minotaur that helped Alessia, the first emperor. So, the first empire, there's been three. We're in the third empire right now with the Septims. The second empire was under Raymond Cyrido, and then the first empire, when, the, when they were slaves to the Aeliads and all the Imperials rebelled, their leader was called Saint Alessia. And she got the Minotaurs or the Nords and a bunch of people to help them rebel and they won. And that's how they established the, you know, Cyrido as a uh, kingdom of men. Well, Polenio was fought alongside her other champion who was a, a, a Minotaur, Morahas, as the champion and uh, during the Alessian slave rebellion of the early first era. Polenio is one name for the legendary immortal hero who wandered Tamrio in the late Marithic era which is the early, early, early days of the world, building up kingdoms and inevitably abandoning them to wander again. So he's kind of weird. Legends say he often had stretches of homicidal madness, during which he slew indiscriminately and took a toll on the very landscape itself. Now, what's cool about this guy, uh, let me read you a little bit more, and then I'm going to tell you the thing that's really neat. The name Polenial means glorious knight. It is a corruption of Pelin El, which means the star-made knight, he was referred to in many ways, in many different ways during the Alessian Rebellion and was known as Polenio Insurgent, Polenio the Bloody, Polenio the Blamer, and Polenio the Third. The last monk heir, Polenio the Third, suggests a relationship with other supernatural champions of mankind, such as Harry, Harold Harry Breeks and Hans the Fox, which I'm not going to get into them. That's really, really old, old stuff. Alt Mary sources suggest that he is one and the same, although it's unlikely that this is the whole story given his more alien characteristics and persona, and the fact that he cannot easily be described as a king or sorcerer. Another theory of his title, of the third, is that it comes from him being the third vision received by Saint Alessia in her prayers to the gods for mankind's freedom from the aliens. He is often referred to as the Divine Crusader. Now, without reading you crap ton more stuff it's believed that he is at what's called a shezering now if you're into skyrim and shore you're gonna love this so a shezering basically shore is one of the original gods that tricked he's a guy he's also known as lorkin he's the guy who tricked the adra into giving up their power to create the world and they were so ticked off with him that they ripped him to a bunch of pieces and his corpse and his heart are under Red Mountain. You find that out in Morrowind. That's part of the main quest. Big deal. And the, the moons in the sky are his um, part of his corpse. So pretty brutal, I know. But uh, he tricked them into creating the world and creating men. So he is the god of men. And he's not one of the main gods you see being worshipped. Kind of funny how that works. 
So a Shazarine is when Shore, even though he's dead, he can, if you played Skyrim, you know, uh, spoiler here, if you don't know this, then plug your ears for about 20 seconds, you go to Sovngarde, and when you're there, you go to Shore's Hall, and Shore is nowhere to be found. Well, that's because he's like omnipotent. But here's the other theory. A Shazarine is when Shore uses his power to incarnate himself as a mortal or another person and then he goes into the world of men and helps men so it's believed that shore wasn't in the shores hall in skyrim because the dragonborn you're playing as is a shazarine he is short now think about that for a second there's a lot more evidence than that mainly that everyone knows you and the throne's open and you can do whatever you want and soon checks you because you gave him instruct I, there's a lot of evidence that i i've seen through, scattered throughout the the uh, internet and forums and stuff that's really cool but anyways how that pertains to what we're doing now uh, is that Polenial is believed to be a Shazarine so whether he was Shore himself or created by Shore we're not sure but what we do know is that he has appeared multiple times throughout history this is the biggest one when he liberated men but like it said earlier he even appeared before recorded history in the Merithic era when all the mortals were like barely learning to write and read and form cultures. Okay, when the Altmar were just a young thought and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. What's cool about him is that it's he's kind of like the Terminator. And I'm dead serious. I know that sounds cheesy, but a lot of people call him the Elder Scrolls version of the Terminator because he basically shows up when he's needed by the gods does his thing and then he disappears and what's cool is the last time he fought umaril uh, i think it says this in one of the lore books he had like robotic parts dead serious the the book describes that he had like cyborg type stuff so whether it was actual cyborg or steampunk or whatever we don't know but we do know that he's not he's not normal so it's a big deal when Polenial died because uh, he hasn't been back. Polenio has not returned to the world since the time that he defeated Umaril, which is what we're doing now. So there's a lot of lore that goes into this DLC that people don't know. And I feel like the DLC, it's kind of appealing to casual market a little bit, which is fine, right? You want an enjoyable playing experience. But for people like me, I was a little disappointed. They don't tell you more about Polenio. You, you'll hear people as we play the DLC, oh, the Crusader relics, and oh, it's a big deal, and you're kind of like, well, that's cool, but why? Why are these a big deal? Why was it that the guy who carried them was a big deal? Why can't anyone who's cool pick up these relics and fight them? Well, it's because they're not a Chesarine. They're not um, a god themselves, exactly, or a demigod, or whatever you want to call them. So, with the whole that being said, thanks for hanging in there with me on the ramble. Uh, it's time. Zakin's going to go shrine to shrine and pray to all the gods. And then from there, hopefully we will be inspired to do what we need to do. Let us begin our quest.
I have completed my pilgrimage to the Way Shrines of the Divines. I should pray and wait for a vision to guide me on my quest for the Crusader's relics. Well, Zakin's pretty tired right now. He's about falling asleep after a few days of riding his horse. Hail, oh. knight! You seek my relics with a worthy heart. Well, that was profound. What's happening? Oh, hope you're not afraid of heights, Zakin. have woken me from my endless dream. Or perhaps you have entered my dream, and I still sleep. I think others have sometimes spoken to me. Others like you, but my memory is doubtful. Perhaps the others came after you. Your need must be great for the gods to allow us to speak. As Umarill, the accursed, found no way back. The fairest of a foul race. A thousand curses upon his unholy name. I thought I won, but I should have known. The slave masters are a cunning breed. Umarill found a way to cheat death as I could not. If you would seek for my relics, I know little that can help you. All that has passed since my death is like mist that my mind cannot take hold of. My friends built a shrine on the site of my death, where the elves tormented me as a final act of revenge. I can show you where it once stood. Perhaps it is there still. Fare thee well, sir, knight. May the gods grant you to destroy. Well, thank you, Millennial. Appreciate that. Oh, welcome back to Earth, I guess. Well, I'd say that qualifies as a vision for sure. Upon completing my pilgrimage to the Way Shrines, I received a vision from the Divine Crusader, Millennial Whitestrake. He revealed the location of his lost shrine, which is where I should begin my quest for the relics of the Crusader. Okay, we got ourselves a location here. Uh, let's see. Where is it at? I believe it's in the in the southern part. Maybe I gotta equip it here. Maybe I didn't have it equipped. I feel like it's somewhere in here. Let's see. It wants us to go northeast. Ah! Okay. Well, it looks like it's in the water, but we'll have to check it out. I know you're tired, Zakeen, but we better get right on this. It's not every day you have a vision like this. Oh, by the way, I also forgot to tell you guys, if you're wondering, which you probably are, I got a new horse. I went and bought another horse. Good thing I didn't name the last one and get attached to him too much. I'll come up with a name for this one. <laughs> 